Here we are again uh, in our Exodus class, Exodus for Beginners. This is lesson number 10 in the series, the covenant between God and his people given and received. A lot of information today. So I hope that uh, you're ready uh, with your uh, workbooks because uh, I'm going to uh, provide you with a lot of details. Well, until this point, the book of Exodus has been a narrative uh, detailing the freeing of the Israelites from the uh, Egyptian slavery by the mighty miracles at the hand of God. And the first portion of their journey, which will bring them to Mount Sinai in the Southern Sinai uh, Peninsula. So far, God has established a, a, a sacred calendar where the first month includes an observance that will commemorate the manner and the result of God's miraculous intervention on their behalf, the Passover meal. This observance will also mark their historical transformation from a dozen tribal clans descended from one man, now enslaved in a foreign power, that was their present condition, to a free nation chosen by God for his divine purpose. That's the transformation that's taking place. Now at Sinai, God's plan is to further reveal himself to them and give them the laws and the observances that will establish a covenant between himself as their God and the Jewish people and nation as his own chosen people. The details of this covenant will be found in the law and the ordinances that God will give to uh, Moses to hand down to the people. And the purpose of these will be twofold. First, they will define and form the character of the people into a holy nation, representing the true and living God in a world of disbelief and pagan sinfulness living by the commandments and incorporating the various laws and ordinances will transform their thinking and their behavior to reflect the will of God and the character of God to the nations around them. An important uh, verse found in Isaiah 42, six, Isaiah writes, I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness. I will also hold you by the hand and watch over you and I will appoint you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nations. Very important. The religion that God gave them in the form of rituals and sacrifice and places of worship, you know, the tabernacle in the desert and then eventually the temple in Jerusalem, as well as the dedicated priesthood as spiritual leaders and teachers, all of this, all of this was given as an ongoing preview of the plan of salvation that God would one day fulfill that would affect not only the Jews, but would create a people of God made up of both Jews and Gentiles. We read in the New Testament, for I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek or to the Gentile. We could summarize by saying that the Jewish nation was created by God to be a historical, cultural, and religious stage upon which the Savior sent by God would make his appearance and carry out his ministry, which was to die for the sins of all mankind and resurrect in order to confirm God's word as true. Exodus, you're wondering, you know, what, what's all this big long preamble, what's it for? Well, Exodus therefore is Moses's record of God's initial steps in forming a nation out of Abraham's descendants and the details concerning the initial covenant made with the people as well as the transfer of information about important matters, such as the commandments themselves. In Exodus, we read the information where God gives you know, to Moses the commandments, 
He also gives them the laws and the ordinances, in other words, rules of conduct in various situations. He gives them the manner of worship, the manner of sacrifice, the way to give to God. Um, uh, in, this, uh, in this book, you have the uh, priestly order and the tasks, the design, the materials, and the construction of the portable place of worship and the presence of God, which would be contained, if you wish, in the tabernacle. And of course, details concerning holy days and feasts. Of course, this information is not only found in the book of Exodus. Many of the details mentioned here are repeated and expanded in the books of Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy, with each book giving special attention to particular topics. Uh, for example, uh, in Exodus, we learn about the departure of the Israelites from Egypt, but we also learn about the covenant and the details of the covenant and the law. And we learn about the tabernacle and its construction. In the uh, book of uh, Leviticus, uh, the sacrificial system is explained in detail and you have the role of the priests in that sacrificial system. In the book of Numbers, you have genealogies of the Jewish people. Uh, you have various laws concerning land and a, a history of the wars that they fought. And then in Deuteronomy, uh, Moses uh, summarizes the uh, wanderings of the Israeli, uh, Israelites in the desert. There's also a review of the laws and the uh, ordinances and of course, prophecies by Moses and blessings uh, upon the people. And so we begin therefore with the initial covenant made between God and the Israelites, which uh, is found in the book of Exodus. So the covenant between God and Israel, we begin, uh, that's in chapter 19. So first of all, a covenant is a binding agreement between two parties or more. In Hebrew, the word covenant is derived from the same root word as to cut. This means that, the Bible, uh, uh, that in the Bible, a covenant was a weighty matter and was often sealed with blood. For example, God's covenant with Abraham was sealed by circumcision. In a covenant, both parties are bound with the promise made. Uh, marriage, for example, is a covenant. Two parties bound by the promises made. In God's covenant with Israel, God promised to make the Jewish nation his own chosen people who would fulfill uh, uh, his plan of bringing the Messiah to earth. That's what he wanted them for. That's what he was going to prepare them and form them uh, for this uh, objective. The people on the other hand promised to obey his laws and ordinances which would lead them to great blessings. If they failed to do so, God would curse and punish them, but he would not abandon them completely. For example, despite their total failure to keep his laws, God kept a small remnant of them, right? The tribe of Judah, kept a small tribe of them alive in order to fulfill his larger plan of salvation through Jesus Christ. Jesus still came through the Jewish people, although a much diminished number of Jewish people at the time. Upon their arrival, Moses sets out to meet with God on uh, Mount Sinai in uh, chapter 19, uh, verses uh, one to six. Uh, uh, so let's uh, read uh, in chapter 19, the uh, first uh, verses. In the third month after the sons of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that very day, they came into the wilderness of Sinai. When they set out from Rephidim, they came to the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. And there Israel camped in front of uh, the mountain. So Moses gives us a timeline for their arrival at, my, uh, at Mount Sinai 
from the miraculous crossing at the Red Sea. Three months have gone by. We continue reading. Moses went up to God and the Lord called to him from the mountain. This point will mark the first of seven occasions that Moses will be called by God to meet him on Mount Sinai, thus signifying the importance of this location, which is located in modern day Egypt, part of the Sinai uh, mountain range. Now, the seven times, instead of doing them one at a time when they appear, I want to give you the seven times that Moses uh, went up uh, to Mount uh, Sinai. First time to meet with God regarding the covenant. Second time, uh, Exodus 19, Moses brings the people answer to God. So he, you know, God tells them, I want to make a covenant with the people. Moses goes down and he, he asks the people, God wants to make a covenant with you. And then he goes back up and he brings the people's answer to God. That's the second trip. Third trip, God prepares the people to receive the law. His fourth trip in Exodus 20, God provides more detail concerning the law. And that's where we begin. We see the, the 10 commandments, for example, in, uh, the, um, in Exodus uh, uh, chapter 20. Uh, trip number five, God meets with the leaders of Israel. Trip number six, God provides instructions for the tabernacle and uh, Moses remains 40 days and 40 nights uh, on the mountain as God gives him this, these details concerning the tabernacle and the, uh, uh, you know, the objects in the tabernacle and how they're to be used and so on and so forth. And it is during this sixth trip up to the mountain for 40 days and nights that the people fall away. And uh, we have uh, Aaron making a, uh, the golden calf and, and we'll cover that, but that's during that sixth uh, uh, trip up the mountain. And then the seventh trip in uh, Exodus 34 and 35, uh, God renews the covenant, provides a second set of commandments because Moses in coming down the first time and seeing the people in idolatry cast the, you know, threw the commandments down, the very commandments that God had written with his own hand and they broke. So on the seventh trip, he goes back up, God renews the covenant with the people, provides a second set of commandments, and Moses again remains 40 days and 40, 40 nights. As a wonderful summary of the seven, uh, the seven trips up the mountain, uh, and you can find that in the Exodus commentary in the Truth For Today Exodus commentary uh, by Roper, a good piece of information. And so we continue uh, in, uh, Exodus 19, it says, saying, thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the sons of Israel, you yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now then, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession among all the peoples for all the earth in mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the sons of Israel. Now, this first trip is significant because it is here that several precedents take place. First of all, God reviews and confirms that he is the same God who freed the Israelites from Egyptian slavery by his powerful miracles. Uh, today, we might think, well, you know, why does he have to do that? I think they must have assumed that, don't you think? But in those days, people at that time believed that the pagan gods that they worship were fixed to one place. If you went to another land or to another country, there would be different gods in charge. Sometimes if you went up into the mountains, there'd be the mountain gods. If you came down and you were near the lake, there'd be the lake gods or the river gods or the marsh gods. And so God tells Moses to remind the people that it's still, it's still him that cared for them and safely and powerfully, like he says on eagle's wings, uh, brought them to this place. So he, he was with them in Egypt. He was with them on the trip. He was with them in providing food and so on and so forth. And he is with them here uh, on, uh, you know, at the base of the mountain 
There's no need to fear. It's the same God. So that's one precedent, uh, something new, if you wish, for the, for the people. Secondly, God now officially speaks to the people through Moses and makes them an offer they can accept or refuse. And he, in doing so, respects their God-given unique human trait of free will. I want you to note that Pharaoh, who was only a man, violated their free will by forced enslavement, maintained by military power. God, who is the creator of the universe, he considers and makes allowance for the people's ability to choose for themselves what they will do. And so we see God here um, respecting the free will of the people. He makes an offer to them. You can accept it, you can reject it, but it's, it's in your hands. And then thirdly, God proposes a special relationship between himself and these people a covenant relationship where he will be their only God and they will become his special people. Special in that he will make of them his chosen people. You know, he says, my own possession. Special in that they will be a kingdom of priests where each person can minister uh, to and for God. Special in the sense that they'll be a holy nation in other words, a people that are set apart for a divine purpose. And number four, he also sets the conditions of this covenant or promise. He will do all these things if they obey his laws and ordinances and stay true to the covenant. In other words, if they stay true to being his people, his holy nation and his kingdom of priests. So we continue to read verses uh, seven to nine. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words which the Lord had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses brought back the words of the people to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, behold, I will come to you in a thick cloud so that the people may hear when I speak with you and may also believe in you forever. Then Moses told the words of the people to the Lord. So uh, I don't know if you know it here, but this is a high point in the relationship between God and the people. He, he, he proposes something and without hesitation, they come back and say, we will obey, we will follow all your instructions. They do so uh, eagerly. And so Moses speaks God's word to the people and, and, and both understand and choose, and they, the people, uh, understand and choose to accept God's offer in enthusiasm and unity. Because the passage says, all the people answer together, we will do this. Moses returns to the mountain with the people's answer. And God describes how he will communicate with the people and what the results will be. He will appear in a thick cloud and allow the people to hear him speaking to Moses. This he says will confirm in their minds that Moses is the legitimate leader and spokesman for God and they will never ever forget this, all right? In Exodus 19, 10 to 17, we, we won't read, but uh, we find out that Moses returns to the people with instructions to prepare themselves. Uh, personal uh, cleansing, the washing of clothing, uh, they abstain from uh, sexual uh, activity uh, in preparation for their meeting with God and God will come down from Mount Sinai. Also, no person or animal can touch the mountain under a pain of death. At the sound of the trumpet in three days, the people were to come to the mountain to meet God. Again, Exodus 19, this time verses 18 to 25. On the third day, God appears in fire and smoke and in the shaking of the mountain, as well as the sound of a loud trumpet. 
Moses speaks with him and God answers with thunder. God calls Moses back up the mountain and instructs him again that no one, not even the priests, dare go on or up the mountain under the pain of death. God then sends Moses back to warn the people, but this time Aaron, Moses' spokesman, is asked to return with Moses to the mountain in order to meet with God. Now that God has both the consent and the attention, rather the awe of the people concerning the covenant, he begins to give the details of the law and ordinances that the people are to obey. Based on God's previous instructions to Moses about his appearance before the people, I believe that the people actually heard uh, God relay these instructions to Moses and to Aaron. And with this, we go to chapter 20 uh, and read verse one. Then God spoke all these words saying, and we'll just stop there for a moment. Just as God promised, he begins to speak, relaying the details of the terms of the covenant with the people. The basic covenant is that God will take these people as his chosen nation and bless them with health and prosperity and protection from other nations, if they will obey him. And the following commands, ordinances, religious observances are the details of what he will require them to obey. So God begins with the bedrock commands that will regulate their conduct and relations with God. The first four commands um, are the commands that uh, will direct their conduct and their relationship with God. And the last six commands will direct their conduct and their relationship with other human beings. So we read chapter 20, beginning in verse two. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children, on the third and on the fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing loving kindness to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male or your female servants or your cattle or your sojourner who stays with you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be prolonged in the land which the Lord your God gives you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against uh, your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that belongs uh, uh, to your neighbor. Now you'll notice in your workbook that uh, there's a special section with details on each of the 10 commandments for you to review at your convenience. Uh, I knew that we wouldn't have time to go over every single command uh, in class uh, you know, with the structure that we have, we have only 13 lessons, but I wanted you to have the information on the 10 commandments uh, and it's in your workbooks. Now, for those watching online, you have a couple of ways of obtaining the bonus uh, material here. First of all, uh, you can download a free PDF copy of the workbook from our BibleTalk.tv uh, uh, site. Just click on the Exodus for Beginners series and then select the workbook PDF uh, file. Or you can select the hard copy of the workbook for purchase and it'll be shipped to you. 
Then there's one other way to do it. Uh, you can download the free PDF file or purchase the book entitled Understanding and Obeying the Ten Commandments. It's a study book that includes all of this material plus discussion questions designed for a small group study of the Ten Commandments. So that's some of the bonus material that we have on the topic of the Ten Commandments. Now, back to our lesson. So the people have heard God's voice uh, giving the basic law and commands that God will require for his people. Moses then describes how the people reacted to this amazing phenomena. And uh, we read in Exodus 20, it says, all the people perceived the thunder and the lightning flashes and the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood at a distance. Then they said to Moses, speak to us yourself and we will listen, but let not God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid for God has come in order to test you and in order that the fear of him may remain with you so that you may not sin. So the people stood at a distance while Moses approached the thick cloud where God, uh, where God was. So the people's basic reaction is fear and respect for the power demonstrated by God as well as respect and deference for Moses who is interacting with God, but not dying as they would have had they tried to go to the uh, mountain. They ask uh, Moses uh, to be the one to speak to God uh, and to speak God's word uh, to them because when God speaks, it fills them with fear. Moses explains that God's purpose was not to terrify them, but to test them, to see if they would respect and be motivated to obey him, which would in turn guarantee uh, his uh, presence. In uh, verse 22, it says, then the Lord said to Moses, thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, you yourselves have seen that I have spoken to you from heaven. So in this passage, we see that God reaffirms that he has spoken directly to the people to emphasize that not only did the 10 commandments come directly from God given to the people, but the following instructions now given to the intermediary Moses also comes from a divine source. So we begin with the, uh, the book of the covenant in Exodus chapter 20 and the laws of the covenant, Exodus 20, uh, 23 uh, for three chapters, uh, just various laws of the covenant. Um, the uh, next section, as I said, of the book of Exodus is often referred to as the book of the covenant. The information here expanded upon and further explained the 10 commandments, their meaning, their application in various situations and proper observation in accordance to God's will and purpose, because the 10 commandments are very short, succinct. You know, some of them have three, thou shalt not steal, you know, boom. But in the book of covenant, you have, you know, an expanded explanation as to what that means and, and how you are to apply that in everyday life. Of course, we don't have the time to read and explain each of these, but here's a list of the topics included which were the essence of the Jewish moral law and practice studied and debated by later generations of teachers or rabbis. So here are just the topics that are touched upon in the Book of Covenant. So laws related to worship, to slavery, to personal injury, regarding oxen, because oxen at that time, important, the beast, uh, you know, very important uh, animal to the livelihood of the individuals. Uh, crimes against property, crimes related to idolatry, laws requiring uh, compassion, laws honoring God, the demands of justice in various situations, the law relating to keeping the Sabbath, uh, the annual feasts are explained, laws concerning sacrifice, the giving of sacrifice, and uh, an epilogue entering, uh, the promised, uh, entering the promised land. Uh, uh, we have information even on that uh, event here. So these laws and instructions were not meant to be a burden. 
but rather God's guidance for sinful people so that they could know how to live a holy life, pleasing to God and thus keep their part of the covenant with God. In return, God would honor his part of the covenant by blessing his chosen people. So we read about that in Exodus 23. He says, but you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water and I will remove sickness from your midst. There shall be no one miscarrying or barren in your land. I will fulfill your number of days. I will send my terror ahead of you and throw into confusion all the people among whom you come. And I will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. I will send hornets ahead of you so that they will drive out the Hivites, the Canaanites and uh, the uh, Hittites uh, before you. I will not drive them out before you in a single year that the land may not become desolate and the beasts of the field become too numerous for you. I will drive them out before you little by little until you become fruitful and take possession of the land. I will fix your boundary from the Red Sea to the Sea of the Philistines and from the wilderness to the river Euphrates for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand and you will drive them out before you. Here in this passage, the Lord provides greater details concerning the blessings that he uh, said that he would give them. And so the next part uh, of Exodus is the ratification of the covenant. You know, there's the explanation of it now, the giving of it, and now the ratification by the people. The invitation to enter into a covenant with God has been made by God and it's been accepted by the people. The terms of the covenant have been given. We have the 10 commandments. Uh, these have been explained in detail in the book of covenant. This is the responsibility of the people and the blessings on the people, if they obey, have been described. And this is God's responsibility. So what is left is to ratify, in other words, to approve and formally confirm and sanction the agreement. Today we would say, close the deal, sign the contract. And so we read in Exodus 24, uh, the following. Then he said to Moses, come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel and you shall worship at a distance. Moses alone, however, shall come near to the Lord, but they shall not come near nor shall the people come up with him. Here God calls on Moses, Aaron, and his two eldest sons, as well as the leaders of the people, the 70 elders, to come up to the mountain. However, only Moses is to come near the Lord, leaving the others behind on the mountain and the people on the ground away from the mountain under pain of death. The ratification process is completed in seven steps. First of all, Moses recites the law to the people, verse three. Then the words of the law are written down, giving the covenant permanency. Thirdly, a memorial altar is built. Number four, sacrifices are made and the altar is sprinkled with blood. The book of the covenant was read and once again affirmed by the people. Number six, the blood of the sacrifice was sprinkled on the people, signifying the sealing of the covenant. And number seven, the leaders of Israel, Moses, Aaron, the sons, and the 70 elders shared a meal before the Lord on the mountain. This was a covenant meal signifying peace and solidarity among those who were part of the covenant. We read about that in chapter 24, nine to 11. The next event is that Moses receives the law. Uh, chapter 24, verse 12, it says, now the Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and remain there and I will give you the stone tablets with the law and the commandment which I have written for their instruction. So Moses is called to go up the mountain once again in order to meet with God, in order to receive the commandments written in stone by God. At first he is enveloped in a cloud which was the symbol of God's presence on the mountain. Next, he's called further up and the top of the mountain appears as a consuming fire 
to the people below. That's what they see. In Exodus 24, 18, we read the following. Moses entered the midst of the cloud as he went up to the mountain and Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. We note that before he left, Moses appointed Ur and Aaron to judge matters until he returned. He possibly knew that this journey would be long as it turned out to be for 40 days and 40 nights. And this is where God gives him the commandments and of course, uh, the commandments on two tablets of stone uh, written by God himself. Uh, we can speculate 40 days and 40 nights uh, of teaching, of worship, uh, of adoration, of preparation, whatever, uh, whatever else uh, may have taken place on the mountaintop. We know that Moses uh, descended from the mountain and had the commandments um, with him. All right, well, we're going to stop here and uh, we will continue next week with what happens when Moses comes down and what he finds when he comes down from the mountain. Well, I have a, sometimes I usually come up with some uh, lessons for you based on this. This time I want to turn the tables on you, uh, our class. Um, this time I want each of you to look over your notes and your readings from Exodus 19 to 24. And I wanna see if you can come up with a practical lesson from the material that we've covered just today. Uh, we'll read and we'll add to next week's class uh, video of some of the lessons uh, that you uh, may have uh, come up with. So write them in your workbook. You get a bright idea based on what we've talked about today. If you have a practical lesson, write it in your workbook, but I'd ask you to also write it on a separate piece of paper and uh, hand those in next week. And uh, we'll pick, uh, well, not the best ones, but we'll pick, the, we'll pick some of them anyways to read and share uh, with the class. So let's, let's try to do that for next week. That's uh, lesson 10 complete. Uh, as I say, next week, uh, we'll find out what happens when Moses comes down from the mountain. Until then, God bless you. We'll see you soon.